to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight, may I have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve the open session minutes of March 12, 2018. Make a motion to approve the session minutes from March 12, 2018. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Corrections at it? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we'll pass over student comments. Yeah, unfortunately, Maria could not be here this okay. evening. Are there any members of the community who wish to address the committee at this point? Hearing none, we shall move on to superintendent's comment. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, first, um, I put a few artifacts in your packet of uh, our strategic planning process that started in earnest uh, a week ago today. Um, as the documents show, we have uh, an outstanding committee of uh, 30 different representatives on our core planning committee, representing all four schools, every single stakeholder group, um, parents, students, teachers, staff members, administrators, community members, and so on. Um, and I, I believe I also included in your packet our, our schedule uh, for meetings. Um, the intent is we'll probably meet about a grand total of a half dozen times as a core planning committee, but then there'll also be additional meetings, um, some of which will be focus groups with parents, uh, with students over uh, a couple dates in April. Um, and uh, really the, the, the core activity is really at this juncture is uh, really all about vision building. Um, we started uh, last Monday with the protocol that I also included in your packet known as Portrait of a Graduate, where you're really thinking about what are the end means, what are the most critical skills and habits of, of mind that we want for our kids as they graduate, and then you plan backwards of how do we provide those types of learning opportunities for kids. Um, so I think, it, I think the group that we have to uh, build this vision is really outstanding um, and really, really looking forward to it. And as uh, the timetable shows, it's our hope to have uh, the lion's share of this work done by the summer with uh, a final plan for your approval in August. I don't know, Sean, I know you were there a week ago, if there's anything that you'd like to add to that. Or uh, just that I think it's a really productive crew, and there's a lot of creative ideas coming out of it already. You know, and really, we just went through a bunch of introductions and trying to get to know each other. And I think out of that, we're starting to realize you know what we have to do to put our brains around this problem. So that's well, really good group. Yeah, I agree. Um, second item is uh, you also have in your packet a RFP or a request for proposal for evaluation services of our Spanish Immersion Program. Um, as I say in the background notes, I think this is long overdue. Um, we are now, believe it or not, in year 21 of this program. I think other than maybe in, in its infancy, in its first two or three years, where there was some outside work done through the University of Minnesota, um, we just really have never had a comprehensive evaluation of the program done. So um, we've had this conversation uh, internally, but we've also had this conversation with the uh, Spanish Emergent Advisory Board. And I think this is, uh, the time is right uh, to move forward with this. So as you can see, uh, as the RFP specs indicate, what we're looking to do is um, both a qualitative and a quantitative piece, looking at some of the measures of how well our kids do, some of the, the outright outcomes, but then a qualitative piece um, through surveys, through um, focus groups, and through direct classroom uh, observation, looking at um, 
first off, our structures of the program. You know, it, I, I think we've been long entrenched in the way we do things at the elementary school and the middle school. Is that necessarily the most efficacious way to go? Um, but then also looking at professional practices of the pedagogy, the assessment practices, and also the curriculum. Um, is it appropriate for an immersion program and what type of changes uh, could be made? And then I think another big piece is looking at um, what type of structures and practices do we have in place to assist uh, learners that are struggling or a child that is in first, second, or third grade and they're diagnosed with a learning disability. So I think there's a lot of pieces there. Um, I think the RFP describes them um, to the level of detail that's needed. So we're in the process over the next three weeks of getting um, some people with expertise in this area to um, put forward a proposal to, to do the evaluation. And the timeline would be essentially uh, some of the beginning work over the summer months, but really those first three months of school with the expectation of having an evaluation report in place uh, by the beginning of December and then uh, a report to the school committee uh, on December 10th. So uh, I will keep you apprised on uh, the proposals that we get in, and I will bring them forward to you uh, with a rec recommendation for a vote for or approval uh, for the winning one. Any questions on any of that? OK, thank you. Um, and then last but certainly not least, um, we are delighted to have some guests here this evening. Um, really, uh, our officer core of uh, the Benson Upton uh, Educational Foundation, uh, our, our, our president, Kathleen Meckel, our director of grants, Jen Conrad, and um, our treasurer, uh, Lauren Heather, are here uh, to kind of give an update on where MUFE is. Um, I, if you've been following it, we've had a lot of great deal of success, uh, particularly in fundraising, and uh, most recently, uh, some grants that were awarded. So I don't know, Kathleen, if you'd like to talk a little bit about it. Um, I know we're going to be showing some video, too, so I'm not sure will that be on this screen? Absolutely. It'll okay, all be so there. I'll take you. Okay. So, um, <laughs> First and foremost, we have a new website we're really excited about. This was, um, we put this in place so we could have greater visibility in the community. It's very dynamic. We can make changes much more easily. Um, and we are trying to push this out. So take a look at it at your leisure. Send it out um, to others who are looking to see what we're all about. Um, we've updated a lot of our messaging on this as well. So um, I think it's a pretty good, um, indicator of where we're headed and where we've been and um, would encourage all of you to, to check it out. We are in the middle right now of accepting grant applications for our 2018 um, round of grants. Uh, they are due a week from today. Uh, we have one in at this point, but um, we're hoping for a few more. Um, but we wanted to spend a little bit of time tonight showing you the grants that we did this year. So the, one, the winners from last year have um, been putting their grants in action this year, and they, we asked them this time around, rather than doing a celebration of excellence, which we've done in the past, which was sort of a, 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 an evening event, we decided we um, wanted to have them do video submissions instead. And this way, it stays with the website. We can tweet them out. We can put them on Facebook. We can um, use them on our website. Um, it's more marketing, but it's also to really show you what is going on in these classrooms with these grants. So, um, so we'll start with Artomatic. Um, Artomatic was a grant that was uh, awarded to Mr. Hill and Nick Monk. All narrated as it goes along, it's just music. This is John Hansen and Allison Klisch. The grant was for $1,200. It features a vending type machine that allows students to purchase artwork created by students in the form of metal buttons or pins that are encapsulated in a reusable bubble type plastic unit. 
The 3D printer at Misco Hill also offers the ability to include 3D printed keychains and tokens that are designed by the students. This is um, grades 5 through 12 are impacted by this grant. You'll see one of these um, vending machines at each school, Misco and Nipok. And this promotes artistic expression, but it's also something that, that can be shared among classmates. Robotics project was Memorial, Debbie Coyle for $1,530. This is robotic technology to enhance the engineering and design curriculum. And this grant, um, well there's a lot of um, writing here as well, but this grant features cubelets that are independent cubes that can sense, think, or act. And by attaching multiple cubes magnetically, many different outcomes can occur. The sensing cubes use information So the sensing cubes use information from the environment and includes distance, temperature, or brightness to perform their function. The thinking cubes are mini robots that determine how things will move and then the acting cubes have wheels or lights on them. And as students work with the cubes, they learn how to operate the robots to determine which com combinations will perform the desired task. This is for grades three and four at Memorial. And it highlights imagination, creativity, collaboration, STEM, STEAM, engineering, and robotics, among other things. Oh, if you cover up the light. 
are sustainable they can be used from year to year so and built upon so. um the exchange program is fitting um Nipmuc regional high school this is katie cardamone and trish maloney for two thousand dollars this grant was part of a number of funding efforts that could be for the um to put in place the sustainable exchange program between Nipmuc regional high school and santa Teresa school in san sebastian spain this grant helped to fund the cost of the initial reconnaissance trip to Spain that included a small group of teachers, students, and administrators. The first exchange will take place this September when some of our Spanish-speaking students will travel to Spain for 10 to 14 days and then will have their Spanish counterparts come to Shuafton and Medellin as well. This highlights global awareness, cultural and linguistic immersion, friendship and collaboration with people from another country, and many, many other Our next grant um, video is Makerspace Center's Memorial School Library, Carlin Gale, for $1,050. This grant allowed the Memorial Elementary School Library to create a valuable Makerspace Center featuring real-life hands-on activities within its physical space. The 
financial award allowed Memorial to purchase equipment, tools, kits, and storage for the centers. Each kit presented a variety of challenges and problems for students to work together to solve collaboratively using the resources available at that center. The centers will continue to expand from year to year. They're used with grades K through 4. And as you will see in the video submission, this is a huge kit with kids. Highlights STEM, collaboration, problem solving, failure, and trying again. One other grant that doesn't have a video yet because it hasn't started. Um, that one's called Grow Big or Grow Home. It's from Ms. Go Hill, Sarah Higgins for $730. The purpose of that grant, uh, this grant, is to give students the knowledge and skills to grow their own fresh produce, um, help them understand how beneficial fresh fruit and vegetables are for our health and environment, assist them in gaining knowledge on organic foods, GMOs, what they mean, and what to look for on product labels. 
So Ms. Higgins will be selecting a small group of 10 eighth grade wellness students to participate as her student leaders for this grant. So she'll be working with them directly to um, help teach them some leadership skills and give them the opportunity to work with some of the younger students in our school district. So they'll be traveling to Clough and Misco um, to work with um, fourth graders. Um, they will be um, conducting presentations including discussions on what an organic food is, what are GMOs, what grows in New England, what is the cost of organic food, planting knowledge and skills, and the health benefits, both uh, physical, mental, and social of our organic planting. And then the eighth grade students are actually going to be planting vegetable seeds in a little container that these kids can take home with some instructions on how to care for them um, going forward. So the, they'll be assessed with a pre-health survey and assessment and a post-health survey as well. So, um, so those are the five grants from 2017. As I mentioned, we are hoping to get a number of good grants for 2018 as well. And we hope to be back in fall to present those at least in name to you and come back in a year and have some other fun videos to share with you. So um, check us out. We've been doing a lot of work um, this year. We hope to do even more next year. So um, it's a great group of people and uh, clearly see teachers and students as well. Wonderful. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. We know that's a lot of hard work behind the scenes to raise all yeah. that money. So thank it's you. A lot of work, but yeah. it's for good cause. <laughs> You guys have done an outstanding job. Yeah. And you could just see from those, just those four videos, how many lives you've touched and how, how, how you've impacted kids' learning. So kudos. Especially because it's all hands-on, too. Oh. It's the kind of learning that kids love to do, not the kind of learning that kids have to do. That's right. You know? That's really nice. All right. Um, moving on to administrator's comments. OK, so. Uh, you have in your packet uh, a document that's been in the making for at least a couple of years now, right, Maureen? As yes. far as just formalizing uh, a curriculum review process for the district and coming up with a distinct timetable. So as part of her update tonight, uh, Maureen's going to talk about the work that she and the curriculum district curriculum team have done on this. Well, thank you. And I was thinking, how, how can I work in um, videos of students learning in my future curriculum <laughs> updates because that was amazing. Um, but it, there is that connection um, with the curriculum and this review process that I'll give you. Just a, you have a lot of information in the packet, so I'm just going to give you, you know, some highlights from it. But um, the impact and connection between the resources and reviewing resources we need. So in many ways, here um, the the grants are just enhancing what we're doing, and um, you know, when we identify some gaps or areas. Um, it, it was just, that was great to see, so thank you. And I'm definitely going to incorporate some student videos in all future presentations. Um, <laughs> so uh, basically, what I've been trying to do this year is just give a, some highlights of some of our action steps that relate to our strategic plan and curriculum. Um, so the last time I talked about how we were meeting as vertical curriculum um, teams over the course of this year, um, another action step that we really, it has been a work in progress. Um, uh, going back a, a year or so ago, this had been an action step and I wanted to kind of push it off um, for another year because what I found in our building, when I talked about how we're doing stage one of mapping, stage two, we finished that up and we launched stage three this year. And so I gave some updates on that earlier in the year that really um, the curriculum review cycle should really launch once you have curriculum maps. And um, our teachers and teams have just done an amazing job over the last few years with these curriculum maps and um, putting them in place. So we're really ready for it. Um, another thing that took an extra year is I had uh, a sense in my head of, of what it would look like, then kind of talked in the last year with all other districts of how they do it, and then decided, oh, th we can make this even better. And so I have to give credit to a lot of other um, districts and um, assistant superintendents that have been starting this process as well um, because we collaborated on a lot of the documentation and went to Medway and Ashland and um, Hopkinton and I, I list them in the back, but um, we're all kind of doing the same work and we've had a lot of showing going on last year. So um, basically, what the reason why we have, so we're going to be launching next year a five-year review process. Um, here's a, a list of rationale of why you would have, you want to actually put into place a system and a review that 
it's um, not reliant on, you know, Maureen's going to say, okay, we're going to go and look at curriculum or um, when I found when I was a teacher and it was back when we used to have curriculum and binders, you know, someone would come in, okay, you have to work on curriculum, you did it, you know, typed it up and you went on the binder and then you never looked at it. And what we've really liked about using the database of Atlas is that everyone um, can go in and revise it and it's kind of, it's ongoing. So now that we've built it, Beyond just those curriculum maps, we also want to review everything that relates to the programming. Um, we want to look at assessment data. We want to, if there are new standards that come in, which um, ha has been happening. So, you know, for example, we have social studies. Um, the draft standards are, are out and people are getting feedback on that. That's going to impact our social studies programming in the district. So we have to have review and have a form review. So that's one example. Or a couple years ago, we had the new science standards. So we have state, ma state mandates. Um, so it's important to have the system in place where you have a broad team looking at it and also looking at resources. So um, that's a piece of we might, um, coming out of some of these self-studies, we may identify areas where we say, oh, you know, we have a, a, a great you know, core program for math, go math at the elementary level, but maybe we identify, okay, for tier three, and this has come up a little bit, tier three, we might need some specific resources for some students. Okay, well that's gonna come, those things are gonna come out of conversations with um, our teams across the district when they do this, and then we can you know, implement and put it into the budget, make recommendations. So there's a lot of reasons to really have a formal review process in there. Um, so uh, t what we decided to do, um, and dis districts do it different ways, some do like seven years, some do three, kind of went with the five years, where you have um, phase one, and I'm going to, that's kind of, I, I think, almost, almost the most important part, so I'll give you some highlights on that in the next slide. But basically, you develop a team, you have to start your self-study, when we analyze all of this, I'll talk about that in a moment, and then the next, um, after you have the self-study, then we would go to develop, redesign, maybe we want to make changes to our curriculum or broad changes. And then you kind of go into this monitoring implementation. Maybe you work in um, develop, redesign. Maybe you want to pilot some materials and then you're going to go in and maybe fully implement it, monitor it, and then we want to evaluate and have assessment, look at assessments just prior to when you would start the self-study. So the self-study would be the first thing we'd be launching next year. And this would be new, you know, we had, as far as I'm aware, I don't know if we've ever done this kind of process. Um, what we would do is we would have a curriculum review team. Um, it would have a range of administrators, um, curriculum leaders, teachers, special ed representatives, specialists, um, if it's a fit. Um, not too big, but kind of representation across the district. And I would say our curriculum work this year um, with the vertical teams and representatives, I think is a good start because we're having beginning vertical conversations. Um, and then in the self-study process, in your packet, it goes into a lot of details. Um, so in just to refer you to like page five is the beginning of the self-study directions. So that team, um, at the beginning of the year, we would go over this and they would develop essential questions. So I have a list of types of questions that they might want to look at in the study. Um, about instruction, assessment, resources, professional development, and so that group would um, analyze that, look at um, current curriculum where we're at, and in the end, they would come together and have a self-study document, and that would end up being presented at the end of the year, so I'll show the timeline, um, talk about that in a second, but um, basically, we would have that, and then we, if we identified there was an area that we needed to make some changes, then we'd develop an action plan and then we would launch that in the next year. Um, so our goal, and this is the first time we're doing this, but based off of what other districts that I've talked to that I've been doing the last, oh, sorry, the last couple of years, um, we would try to I'd launch it at the beginning of the year in September to October, we'd convene it, and then the team would start to develop the essential questions and then start the review, um, kind of November through February. And then what you do once you have that self-study report, and I almost hesitate to say, it's similar if you think of a NEASC report, because it's not going to be that comprehensive, but where, if any of you are familiar with NEASC, once you have your report of your self-study, it goes back to all the teachers for them to validate it or give feedback on it. So there would that be opportunity that this group would come up with that self-study report, like an executive summary of it. They'd go back, teachers could take a look at it. We'd complete, make any changes, and then we'd present it and start the action plan. In the back of the packet, there are a lot of um, you know, templates that we would use. Now, some districts 
they that went that whole process they do it over the course of 18 months to two years um, other districts are doing it in one I'm gonna try to do it in one and then it's possible that we may find we need, need to adjust it but we're gonna kind of shoot to have that kind of schedule um, so I was purposeful with putting social studies first so basically um, you generally would have one to two to three curriculum focus areas in a year. Um, I say this is you know kind of tentative too. We may there may be a big shift sometime with some standards, and we say okay, you know maybe we need to adjust it because we're if we're already doing the work, maybe that would make sense in that year. Um, so with social studies, with the new standards, basically a lot what a lot of districts are doing right now is they're not making any big changes next year because they're, they're going to be approved in June they're going to start to just build their implementation plan next year to start the transition um, in coursework in the following year. So I put that first because we're gonna be doing that work anyways. Um, and also just through our um, Excel network and social emotional learning that we've been talking about, a lot of things that come up you know, with wellness um, and some goals and maybe, and I know we've talked at the middle school about you know, taking a look at our wellness programming. So I thought that might be a good fit. So I'm trying to balance with um, especially our elementary teachers who teach all of those um, core subjects not to have double up of social studies and math in one year I ELA science, so I, I spread them out over the years. Um, I also thought, for example, with ELA going in the following year, that if you think back to, you know, especially at the elementary level, um, the changes we've made, um, we, we'd be about five years in with uh, reading wonders, so it's a good time to kind of start that review. Um, and also there are new um, art standards that are coming out. Um, and I know part of our goals have been review of special ed programming, so I thought that might be good to kind of you know, dive a little deeper too. Um, so it's possible we change some of those, but um, you work kind of on a, on a cycle through that. And that is kind of the quick overview, but I'm excited that on my end, I, I kind of feel like I have something I, I, I think will really work for us. And, um, yeah, in different districts, I've gone through different processes, and I've seen some work well, and some kind of, you know, you kind of just do a quick review. But I, I think there's a lot in here that um, other districts have shared with me that I think it's going to be great for us to have an established cycle for reviewing this. So I'm excited so, about that. So by the time by the time you ramp up to 2022, then all of those will be in progress at some phase. Right. Yeah. Right? And then you'll just repeat the process exactly. again. I see. Yep. And so when I for example, when I, um, actually, I almost think back to my first year as teaching um, when I was at Taunton High School and I came in and I remember everything was kind of very budget and resource related and it would be like, this is, you'd hear, this is the year that social studies revealing everything and that was a really big school. You're like, okay, you know, coming a new teacher. But um, that had been in place a long time there and then um, it was similar in Framingham. We had kind of a review process and um, we did it differently and when I was in Grafton. So I've seen it. And um, I think it works well if you can, if you're really strategic also for budgeting. So um, sometimes you may find that, okay, we know um, we need to allocate some of the resources that are in this department, but we're gonna need to get resources because we've identified it here. And you can kind of work, work through that. Um, so it will all be up and running. Now I'm curious about, I'm curious when you're creating curriculum for one, mm -hmm subject if there's opportunities for cross yeah i think cross um subject. i hope i have questions in there about that if i don't let me know because i can always add it in but um yeah. but yeah it, definitely that would be part of it um the essential questions that i would hope that we would be um talking about yeah, cool. and what's nice about now that we have the written curriculum now we can keep making it better and so we have so if we look at um when we get to stage three, for example, or which is kind of what the, the lessons are, I, the teachers, if they're really using it, they're gonna go in and, and look at every year, what can, what can I do? So we can look through it for a, a lens of technology, let's say, and say, you know, are we, um, and run reports and say, like, where are we using technology and integrating? Okay, well, there might be a gap, or maybe, uh, you know, we talked, you know, we have uh, Lori here for science, like, you know, maybe there was a goal with lab reports. Okay, well, we can pull that up and hone in, but it's also that interdisciplinary piece 
where we can take a look and run what course, what's nice about Alex, you can run who's um, at the same time, and it builds that interdisciplinary because if I'm a social studies teacher, um, I can look to see in that grade level what they're doing in the other subjects too. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. And we had talked about, when we had our middle school meeting, we talked about infusing art mm -hmm. into, because like that was such a great release for, you know, the middle school age child. Like, so I see that, you know, we're going to evaluate, um, you know, each of those topics, but could we like address that immediately? Like how we infuse art into, you know what I mean? Like, is there an opportunity to do it like based on our discussions? Uh, I don't know. I well, a we are doing like I know that's yeah. not a specific topic, but yeah, this is there. like so. I would gather just for this. Let's say you would have all the social studies representatives, and they'd be honing in on these standards and review and materials and what's out there and mandates. Um, but I would say that we are actually having a lot of those conversations. So um, you know, when I I was thinking like at the um, the high school, we're doing a the last like lead learner meeting, we were talking about how we can work across and integrate and, and create new courses and bring in art um, into what we're doing. So um, a lot of those conversations are taking place in some of the some of these meetings that we're having, like with dep department chairs, mm -hmm. um, in some of the lessons. And um, our art teachers are amazing in this district. I mean, they are already working with teachers all the time. Um, there are lots of examples where there do, there's a lot of integration. Um, some I know about, you know, because yeah. it would be kind of public or that was awesome. And but others, you know, I kind of hear about it after the fact. I'm like, oh wow, they're doing that. Um, they they've really been intentional this year with their own planning and with um, Alice has had the whole department working together. Um, I love that because yeah. that was super impactful okay. for me to kind of see that as a as something that that age set needs. And yeah. you've always think about art as an independent subject mm -hmm. versus it being just kind of filtered into yeah. everyday curriculum. Yeah, there's lots of examples of So I know that doesn't have yeah. to do specifically with yeah. the review process, but just something that kind of comes to my mind. I think, Diane, as we finish up stage three of the curriculum mapping, then the work next year at MISCO is to, now we have maps, now we can start to lay them out on the table and look at where the overlaps and the obvious connections are. Um, and in the scheduling piece we're working on is how do we get um, elective teachers so that they're able to attend team meetings to collaborate with their colleagues on that kind of work. So That's exactly Comment. what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Sean. Moving on to subcommittee updates, the superintendent evaluation subcommittee, Sean, do you know what? So this is a placeholders, I understand, for uh, for the six month review. You got it. That's my update. That. So we need to get a date. <laughs> 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 yeah. So we have to agree on a date. Okay. So we can do that. Do you want to do, do that, that right now or do you want to do it after? Let's do it after. We can do that. Okay. 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 Um, next item on the agenda is old business. Is there any old business we need to cover? Hearing none, moving on to new business. The approval of field trip to the Andes and Amazon Adventure. Okay, you have in your packet, I think, a great deal of information about uh, this proposed trip. Um, and uh, uh, MISCO science teacher Lori Holloway is here um, uh, along uh, with Jen Mannion. Uh, to answer any questions that you have. I think probably the best document is the one that has kind of the, the summary of the details of the, of the trip. Um, as I say in the background notes, I, 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 I realize that this is um, very different as far as having our uh, middle school students travel internationally. Um, and Lori started pitching the idea, I want to say probably around the holidays, to both myself and Jen. Um, and uh, basically everything that I have asked her to do uh, as far as looking into interests, looking into safety considerations, looking into parental involvement, and looking at uh, really meaningful connections of the trip um, 
to, to meaningful student learning and, and applying it beyond just that eight-day span where the kids will be gone. Um, she's done. And um, about two weeks ago, she had a session to gauge interest. And uh, I think the interest has been extremely high. It's been so high to the point that, correct me if I'm wrong, Lori, the, the trip is sold out. The trip is sold out, and we have we, a, a we waiting maxed list. maxed out, and I think uh, the tally is 47 students, but <clears throat> 25 parents, so a little bit more than half, uh, are opting uh, to go with the students. Um, and then also, in addition to Lori, there would also be eight uh, chaperones uh, from the MISCO staff. So you see uh, what the trip would entail. It's, it sounds like it's a pretty remarkable uh, opportunity um, with regard to seeing uh, Quito, Ecuador, but then also having some opportunities uh, exploring the Andes Mountains, but then also uh, excursions through uh, the Amazon through the rainforest and you see uh, some of the adventures that they have going along with it as far as with the National Park and uh, a waterfall excursion and uh, rafting and so on. Um, something that I also really like is there's a couple of our parents, uh, one of which is a biologist and the other being a veterinarian who are very interested in creating some uh, cross-curricular connections uh, with regard to uh, an animal rescue center and also doing some work with uh, an indigenous community um, in Ecuador. So I think there's, uh, I, I, again, I realize that this is very different, um, but I think there's a high degree of excitement around this, and I think it's a, a really unique opportunity uh, for our kids. So um, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Lori, or a, as a, a school committee, do you have any specific questions for Lori or for Jen? I think you summed it up perfectly. Um, I knew this would be, um, I knew there would be a lot of interest in this trip, but I'm honestly blown away by how excited students and the parents are. Um, when I opened the trip after the meeting, by the time I went to bed, we had 40 people that had put the trip on deposit. And by the weekend, we had actually sold out and have started a waiting list. Um, so the response has been overwhelming. The kids, the parents, they are so excited. They can't wait. Um, you know, obviously, there's questions about an international trip and why this age. And I think it speaks to the Menden Upton community and the terrific students that we have that our teachers are saying, you know what, these kids are great, and I'd be happy to take them to another country and to travel with them and to give up my own personal vacation for a week. Because believe me, that's not something that would happen in every school district where the teachers would say, hey, let's go to a foreign country. Um, but these kids are amazing, and I'm so excited as an educator to be able to you know, give my students an opportunity that is not something they're probably ever going to get to do in their lifetime. I mean, I'm sure their parents will take them on vacations, hopefully at some point, and maybe they'll go to Europe. Um, but most families aren't typically planning trips to the Amazon rainforest, so I'm so excited to present to my students um, something that they might never get to do otherwise. Um, I think it has some amazing opportunities for us to do some community service when we're down there. Um, not only are we visiting um, an indigenous people, um, we're being invited into their community, into their school, um, which I think will be a wonderful opportunity to our very digital cell phone, iPad driven students to you know, see how the other half of the world lives and, you know, just to grow, to grow as a global citizen and really have a life-changing experience. I'll just piggyback on that by saying um, this year we encouraged teachers at MISCO to base their professional uh, learning goals and student learning goals on their own passions because we really believe that this trickle-down effect so that when the educator is enthusiastic and passionate about what they're doing, um, the engagement increases as well. Um, so I think Ms. Holloway really took that to heart and thought this is something I'm passionate about as a science teacher, what better place to take kids and have them behave like scientists. Um, and when she first approached me with the idea, I, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> I didn't really mean that passionate like the Amazon. <laughs> My mom hat kind of kicked in real quick, but then I thought, 
yeah, that's where her passion lies, and that's what it's about, is this type of learning for kids and people being willing to take risks. Um, and uh, there's no better person. I, I would not <coughs> anybody more with this experience in our students than Ms. Holloway, so okay. I'm right there with her. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Um, so I'm wondering, how many people are on the waiting list? Um, I have one student and one sort of friend of a chaperone and like her niece. So if a spot opens up, it'll go to the student. I think it's amazing. Yeah, it's <laughs> a great, great, great program. Yeah. We're really excited. We're happy. I'm going to question whether or not people will be interested in it. Yeah. It's and, already sold out. And when she first pitched the idea, um, it's like, what are, you, what are you gonna get? Like eight kids, <laughs> ten kids, maybe. Like, and, what's your target and, group size? And, and <laughs> she she shared with me um, a, a former colleague and a mentor uh, from Auburn, who's been doing this trip for twenty years with seventh and eighth grade students, and he he talked my ear off on the phone for an hour about the trip, <laughs> and he said, you know. No word of Elijah, it really is a life-changing trip for the kids. And he also felt very passionately about have that connection within your community. It would be wonderful if you had a parent that is in some type of STEM-based career that can bring home you know, some of, uh, some of the learning home to the kids and keep it building. Um, and to her credit, Lori's done absolutely everything that I've asked her to do. She's made the connections that I think are critical, and that's why I'm recommending that uh, it be approved. Okay. Any other questions? All right, do we need a motion? So I'm calling for a motion to approve the Amazon field trip for April. Motion to approve the Amazon field trip for April vacation 2019. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity and for your time. I appreciate it. All right. Next item on the agenda is correspondence. Okay. You have in your packet, and here's a, a hard copy uh, for your signatures. I think, Diane, you're the only one that we still have uh, left to get. Uh, is a formal letter on behalf of the school committee, first one to Representative Meridian and Representative Murray, and the second one to Senators Fatman and Moore, um, just advocating very um, succinctly um, four pieces uh, as they work through uh, the House budget process in April and then the Senate budget process in May. Uh, first, that the minimum or per pupil uh, increase for FY19 uh, be up to $100 per student rather than the current $20 per student that's in the governor's budget. Um, that the regional school transportation uh, reimbursement rate be funded at 100% versus the present 66% that it's at. Uh, that circuit breaker for special education be fully funded uh, by statute to achieve the 75% reimbursement rate rather than the 65% that it was cut to this year. And then last but not least, uh, the, the Senator uh, Diaz Chang's bill that uh, significant progress be made to fund the recommendations of the Foundation Budget Review Commission, uh, particularly those related to health insurance and special education costs. Um, as I say in the background notes, um, I really do think that there is a critical mass of people out there from regional school districts advocating for these pieces. It's kind of interesting. We've had this formal um, organization, MARS, the Massachusetts Association of Regional Schools. Uh, a couple groups start this Facebook page, support. Uh, Massachusetts regional schools, and it seems like there's a lot more energy there than the formal organization. But um, you know, I, I, I've had uh, you know we had uh, Senator Moore here a couple meetings ago. I had the opportunity to speak to uh, Representative Murray and Senator Fatman yesterday at an Eagle Scout ceremony. Um, you know, they realized that the forecasts are more optimistic with regard to revenue for FY19, 
So I know that they're getting um, an assault of, um, you know, an assault of requests from every single type of need. Um, but that minimum per pupil increase, uh, if that did go forward to $100 per student and um, the reimbursement rate, I know we'll probably never see 100%, but say it went from 66 to 85, uh, the, the issues that we had in approving uh, a budget was still uh, a quarter of a million dollars worth of cuts that would be negated right there if those two things could happen. So um, I think advocacy is important. I'd like to uh, not only forward these letters with, with your consent, of course, uh, to our legislative delegation. I'd also like to send them to the uh, town crier and to the Milford Daily News. And um, I think we should also start a social media campaign to notify our parents to reach out um, to our four representatives. Um, I think it's critically important that they know that we're watching. Um, uh, you know, again, uh, the, the increase in state aid is 0.57%. The increase to our two communities is 36 and 3.4%. It's, it's not a fair balance. Mm -hmm. So I'll get off my soapbox right now. <laughs> Um, are there other matters not anticipated by the committee within 48 hours of the meeting? Well, do we have the um, motion to approve a letter going out? I think that's, is that not necessary? Um, you can vote on it if you want to. Passively agree. Okay. Yeah. You want to take a <coughs> motion to Yeah, yeah. I want to take so a motion So I'll call to for a motion to um, formally endorse the signing and sending of the letters to our legislators and um, as letters to the editors of the respective. Second. Newspapers. You make the motion. No, motion to send the letter out to our representatives okay. for uh, rectifying budget problems in the state. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. second. Just Any discussion? <laughs> Any discussion? Okay. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, and the letter shall go out, <laughs> and the press shall be notified. Okay, um, so moving forward, do we have other matters? Um, not to my knowledge, no. Okay. Um, future agenda items include the homework committee update on April 9th and the presentation of Metro West Adolescent Health Survey data on April 23rd. I hear tell there's a 5K coming up for the murder. There is. On Sunday, April 8th, which okay. I believe is a week from this coming Sunday, 10 o'clock okay. uh, is the 8th annual uh, murder 5K. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be really braggadocious here. I think I'm the only person on the planet who's run in every single one. I even wow. ran in the first one before I was officially superintendent. Okay, uh, but it, it really is a great cause. Um, we're, we're as they do every year at 9:30 is the fun run for the little kids, and then the full 5K. Um, they raise a significant amount, and it goes back into the community. It goes back to our kids. Uh, for scholarships each year. So Excellent. I strongly recommend um, you can either go to the district Facebook or the district uh, Twitter and there's a link uh, to sign up for it. Great. Okay. Um, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is that okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned at 8.01.